I am the salvation of the people, says the Lord. Should they cry to me in any distress, I will hear them, and I will be their Lord forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, on this Thursday, in the third week of Lent, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You are sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father and intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. We implore your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as the feast of our salvation draws ever closer, so we may press forward all the more eagerly towards the worthy celebration of the Paschal mystery. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, This is what I commanded my people. Listen to my voice. Then I will be your God, and you shall be my people. Walk in all the ways that I command you, so that you may prosper. But they obeyed not, nor did they pay heed. They walked in the hardness of their evil hearts, and turned their backs, not their faces, to me. From the day that your fathers left the land of Egypt, even to this day, I have sent you untiringly all my servants, the prophets. Yet they have not obeyed me, nor paid heed. They have stiffened their necks and done worse than their fathers. When you speak all these things to them, they will not listen to you either. When you call to them, they will not answer you. Say to them, this is the nation that does not listen to the voice of the Lord its God or take correction. Faithfulness has disappeared. The word itself is banished from their speech. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response is, if today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. If, if today, today you, you hear, hear his voice, harden not, not your, your hearts. hearts. Come, let us sing joyfully to the Lord. Let us acclaim the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us joyfully sing psalms to him. If today you if hear, hear his, his voice, voice harden not, not your hearts. Your Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord who made us, for he is our God, and we are the people he shepherds, the flock he guides. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Oh, that today you would hear his voice, harden not your hearts as at Meribah, as in the day of Massa in the desert, where your fathers tempted me. They tested me, though they had seen my works. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Even now, says the Lord, return to me with your whole heart, for I am gracious and merciful. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. 
Jesus was driving out a demon that was mute. And when the demon had gone out, the mute man spoke, and the crowds were amazed. Some of them said, By the power of Beelzebub, the prince of demons, he drives out demons. Others, to test him, asked him for a sign from heaven. But he knew their thoughts and said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself will be laid waste, and house will fall against house. And if Satan is divided against himself, how will his kingdom stand? For you say that it is by Beelzebub that I drive out demons. If I, then, drive out demons by Beelzebub, by whom do your own people drive them out? Therefore they will be your judges. But if it is by the finger of God that I drive out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. When a strong man fully armed guards his palace, his possessions are safe. But when one stronger than he attacks and overcomes him, he takes away the armor on which he relied and distributes the spoils. Whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me scatters. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. Jesus Christ. Whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me scatters. You're dating someone. Hypothetically, I'm celibate, not allowed to date. But hypothetically, you're dating someone. One of the joys of dating them is that you seek to know anything and everything you can about the other person. What's their favorite color? What's their favorite food? What's the hobbies they enjoy? Who are their family? Who are their friends? What are their aspirations and dreams? Are they a Kansas City Chiefs fan? If the answer is no, the date is over. You never talk to them again. All the important things thereof. But you don't want to just know this information to just like have an Excel spreadsheet of information about them. That information, that truth about them is now useful, is now necessary to be able to love them and to be able to express that love to them. Hey, it's our anniversary. What's her favorite food? What does she like to do? Okay, that's what I'm going to have us set up to do for the anniversary. She really likes animals. We're going to the zoo. She really likes Italian. We're going to Italian, etc. But it's also necessary because if we go against that, it directly hurts our relationship with the other person. Hey, she keeps telling me over and over and over again that she has a peanut allergy and she's deathly allergic. I don't really want to listen to that. So I'm going to make her peanuts and peanut butter and jelly and peanut butter cookies and all these peanut things for her anniversary. She will not appreciate that from the hospital. And if we persist in doing this to her over and over and over again, she's going to very quickly get the idea, hey, you don't love me. You don't care about me because I've told you what is good for me, and you keep doing the opposite. So clearly, your love for me is not what you tell me it is, and I think we should see other people. And thus, Father Klein entered the priesthood. The same is true with our Lord. Our Lord is making it very clear for us how to know him and how to love him. In our gospel reading this Sunday, last Sunday, he makes mention that we will come to worship him in spirit and truth, making it clear to us that the truth he gives, the deposit of faith, is how we give him right worship. And at the Last Supper in the 14th chapter of John, right before he goes to the cross, he makes the point of saying, I am the way and the truth and the life. So we are not only supposed to know what is true through him, hey, God, help me to know the truth. The truth is supposed to lead us to him, to help us know him, to help us love him, to help us enter into the eternity that awaits us of perfect beatific relation. And just like with that date night, if I know the truth 
and I willingly go against it, I directly hurt my relationship with the one whom I'm supposed to love. If our Lord is like, hey, I'm telling you how to love me is to honor the Lord's day, you keep not doing that. You keep making peanut butter cookies. Clearly, you do not love me. In a more, you know, another way to look at it too, my sister has kids with food allergies, pretty severe food allergies. She chooses to ignore what the doctors tell her about those food allergies. She hurts her kids and she hurts her ability to be a good and loving mother to her kids. So she always makes great pains to take care of the food that is prepared for them, whether at home or they go eat out, is in keeping with what their bodies can handle. The truth empowers her ability to love her children. The truth empowers our ability to love our spouses, our friends, our family, etc. The truth empowers our ability to love he who is truth. And our Lord is letting us know crystal clear, we cannot love him and also oppose that which he tells us, helps us love him. We are either all in for him or we're against him. So our invitation this Lent is not just to seek out the deposit of faith, sacred scripture, the catechism of the church for our own edification, for the confidence it gives to live in the truth and life and the clarity it gives to go to heaven. We are to know it and to love it and to live it because it helps us know and love him and prepare us for the eternity of knowing and loving him. So if we find ourselves in a hardness of hearts, unwilling to let go of the things that directly oppose the truth he's given us, this is our Lord making one clear to us where that path leads away from him. But two, this is our Lord petitioning us to seek his help, that he, the way, may help us to let go of our pride and our sin, and in humility, live a life in keeping with the truth, that we may love him with all our heart, and live a life that will lead us eternally to him in love. Whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me scatters. My brothers and sisters, trusting in the love and mercy of our Lord, let us unite our hearts and minds and bring forth to God these petitions. For all the intentions which we hold in the silence of our hearts, and for the intentions and well-being of all EMTs for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for the profound gift of your mercy and love. Please help us by your grace and the intercession of your saints to return the gift of love to our neighbor and to you in all that we are and all that we do. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Cleanse your people, Lord, we pray, from every taint of wickedness, that their gifts may be pleasing to you, and do not, do not let them cling to false joys, for you promised them the rewards of your truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and James, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, 
that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With your spirit. Let us offer one another the sign of peace. Take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace.
Let us pray. Graciously raise up, O Lord, those you renew with this sacrament, that we may come to possess your salvation, both in mystery and in the manner of our life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We call on your loving kindness and trust in your mercy, O Lord, that since we have from you all that we are, through your grace we may seek what is right, and have strength to do the good we desire. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. The Mass is ended. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. <laughs>